morning, I'm Jody Davis. I'm currently serving on the Stewardship Committee and it is on their behalf that I speak with you today. I have a couple of reminders from scripture and a special announcement from the Stewardship Committee. The Ten Commandments stress that God must come first in our lives. And Jesus reminds us again in Matthew 33, verse six, when he says, seek first God's kingdom, then righteousness and all of these things shall be yours as well. The Stewardship Committee is pleased to announce that we have been blessed by two families with special challenge gifts. If we receive 65 intent cards by the end of our stewardship appeal, these two families will give one-time gifts totaling $8,000. We are so thankful for these families and their generosity. Members of Good Shepherd can expect their intent cards to come in the mail around October 22nd. Please help us by returning your intent card. You can join us at a special drive-in service on Sunday, November 1st at 1030, when you can return your intent card to declare the generosity that you intend to share with Good Shepherd. If you cannot attend the service, you can return your intent card by mail or by emailing the church office. Today, we continue to share stories of generosity. I'm pleased to introduce the next video. Please listen as Tim O'Connell shares his story. Hello, I'm Tim O'Connell and this is my generosity story. So my story is going to be two parts. <clears throat> the first one answers the question, who taught me to be generous? And the second part is going to be uh, an example of generosity that I recently experienced from our Good Shepherd Church community. So the person that jumps out to me that taught me to be generous was my grandfather, my mother's father who lived his life in Paris, Illinois, just about 100 miles uh, southeast of here, actually 60 miles southeast of here. Uh, like most people of his generation, he grew up poor. Uh, he went to fight in World War II in the Navy. He was a ship's cook. And when he came back, he started his own grocery store and was very successful at that. He became a very prominent, successful businessman in his town. Um, from what I've heard and what everyone has kind of told me over the years, he was very generous, giving to all the local businesses in his community, giving to the local church, other churches that he wasn't a member of even. Um, my mom told me a funny story, which was that whenever my grandfather would go to a restaurant or a store or a place of business, uh, most people, when they do that, they're looking for the best deal. Well, my grandfather would look for whether the person he was dealing with was getting a fair enough profit. So my grandfather was always wondering whether he was paying enough or whether he should be paying more so that that businessman could be making a profit. <clears throat> um, another interesting story, one time when I was small, I remember my grandfather and, and my grandmother came to visit us and we had a small little TV and uh, he must have stayed up and watched some TV with my parents after I went to bed. But apparently the TV was not up to his standards. It was too small or not good enough quality. And so the next day he went out and bought us a nice new giant Sony TV with color so that uh, we could enjoy TV better. And so that was just another example of his generosity. Um, we used to have wonderful Christmases at my grandfather's house and he would be the one who went out and bought presents for all the grandkids. Uh, basically, it was a blank check. You told them what you wanted and that's what you got. There was no uh, finagling or uh, writing a list and then you get the two best things. Or you, if you told grandpa you wanted something, he got it for you. And to me, that's, that's just uh, underscores his generosity. Um, he died when I was 12 and his funeral was one of the first funerals I'd gone to. And I think there were over 300 people there, uh, maybe even 500, I don't know. But the, the number one thing that people said to me and my parents about my grandfather was he was the most generous man that we ever knew. Uh, that word generous just kept popping up over and over. Um, so so that's, that's part one. Part two will be quick. Uh, last week, uh, my family and I, we baptized our daughter, Clara, who's uh, now three months old. And <clears throat> it's pretty hard to work out logistics and whatnot for a, uh, a baptism during the COVID pandemic, as I'm sure some of you can imagine. It's not what we would have planned for our family. But uh, the leadership team at, at Good Shepherd, Jason, Pastor Wells, uh, as well as the, the Welka and um, all the admin team were really great. We got everything done within about three weeks. We had the whole thing planned. We had a Zoom baptism. 
we had everything perfect. We had all of our family members uh, online able to watch. We had a banner made for Clara. We had um, uh, the photographer from the church came and took free photos for us and, and did all the Zoom. So I just thought that was really generous of everybody to kind of come together and let us put that together uh, in this uncertain time. So that, that made me feel really, really good about our church and the generosity that's around us. So in conclusion, uh, in my life, I'm very lucky to have no shortage of role models of generosity. And although I'm not always as generous as I think I should be or could be, I'm always striving to be better. And I always look to see what I can do every day to be just a little more generous using the uh, role models and the examples of the people that I have around me in my life. Thank you.